In this video, we are going to be talking about interest rates and whether we will see them drop in the second half of 2024. There has been a lot of data released recently, and in this video, I'll bring you up to speed. Let's start by discussing what an official cash rate means. Every bank in New Zealand is required to have an account with the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. The Reserve Bank is responsible for issuing currency and making sure the financial stability of the country is maintained. In the United States, they call theirs the Fed. At the end of each Day, banks settle their daily transactions with one another by borrowing or lending from the Reserve Bank to ensure smooth passage of funds between the banks. The official cash rate represents the interest rate that the Reserve Bank charges to those banks that borrow from it on their overnight settlement transactions. The inverse is true as well, that banks lending to the Reserve Bank earn rates similar to the official cash rate. Essentially, this creates an interest rate flaw in an economy. Banks can lend to the Reserve Bank and earn the official cash rate, or they can lend to you and I at a higher rate of return. The official cash rate is therefore one of the most effective blunt tools in the Reserve Bank's arsenal. By changing this rate, they aim to control spending. When inflation is high, the Reserve Bank will generally increase the cash rate. This makes it more expensive for people and businesses to borrow and spend, causing them to shop a lot less. The inverse is true too. When there is a lack of economic activity, such as during a recession, generally the cash rate will drop causing businesses and people to borrow and spend more. The issue we faced in New Zealand for the past couple of years is that economic activity is too great, causing inflation to skyrocket up past 7%. The tide is starting to turn and I'll cover a few reasons why we might see the official cash rate start to drop in the second half of the year. First up is the inflation rate. In June 2022, New Zealand's inflation rate rose to an annualized 7.3%. The Reserve Bank's objective is to keep inflation between 1 and 3% over the medium term. So 7% was way too high and was the highest rate we'd seen in over 30 years. Prior to this jump, the official cash rate rose from a low point of 0.25% for much of 2020 and 2021 to 2% 2 by June 2022. By the end of the year in 2022, inflation was still riding high and the cash rate rose even further to 4.25%. So in just over a year, interest rates leapt 4%, one of the fastest rates of increase in New Zealand's history. In 2023, the cash rate rose to 5.5%, where it sits now, and it caused a lot of steam to dissipate from the economy. The inflation rate fell from 7.2% in January 2023 to 4.7% in December, falling to a further flat 4% in March 2024. As we creep closer to the Reserve Bank's sweet spot of 1-3%, to the need for such a high cash rate quickly declines. This is where we are now, with an announcement on the 17th of July, hopefully getting us close to this point. With where the inflation rate is heading, it's just a matter of when the Reserve Bank thinks that they've done enough to stamp out this inflation. Timing this, however, is not easy. Australia's Reserve Bank stopped hiking their cash rate at 4.35%, so their rate is 1.15% below where ours is. In June of this year, Australia saw their inflation rate start to climb again, rising to 4%. Many economists are now calling for their rates to actually go up. But what we can be certain of is that we are well on our way to seeing inflation levels return to their expected range. In the words of the Reserve Bank on the 10th of July, the committee is confident that inflation will return to within its 1-3% to target range over the second half of 2024. The Reserve Bank will be keenly watching next week's CPI announcement to see whether they have done enough to keep it there for a while. The second factor is employment figures. There is some rough data coming out of the labour market that suggests the economy has taken a nosedive. In this article from the 10th of July, you can see the job listings heading in one direction, and that's down. Companies list the role when someone either leaves or they uncover an opportunity to grow their business and need staff to capitalize on it. Assuming the rates of turnover hasn't changed, this suggests businesses aren't currently looking for growth opportunities. This is a symptom of a high interest rate environment as projects require a stronger payback to make it viable, so companies aren't looking for staff at the same levels they had previously. Another factor to consider when we look at employment figures is the opposite. How many people are unemployed? According to StatsNZ, since September 2022, the rate of unemployment has increased by one percentage point. If we extrapolate that across a working age population of 3 million people, 
that's as many as 30,000 additional people out of work. So we saw earlier that companies are looking to hire less people and here we see there are more people looking for work. Excess labor, insufficient jobs. This means a few things. First, if companies aren't investing as much as previously, and secondly, there are less people earning a wage, then New Zealand's economic activity must too be suffering. Even the Reserve Bank on the 10th of July noted the excess capacity in the domestic economy, and that there is easing in the labor market, indicating flat employment levels. The third factor is the lack of growth in the economy. This chart was shown in the Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Statement meeting in May. You can see that since 2022, the New Zealand economy hasn't moved in nominal terms. If we considered inflation as well, New Zealand's real GDP has slipped backwards. This graph is even more troubling if we consider migration figures. For the year ending 31st March 2024, New Zealand's population grew by 2.5%. This included a net migration of over 110,000 people. GDP is a measure of all the production and spending in an economy. So if ours was flat, despite bringing in another 110,000 people, it means even they couldn't plug this monstrous gap in New Zealand's output. Here you can see in nominal terms our GDP, or output per person, declined since 2021. Using Stats NZ productivity figures, you can see the blended rate declined from 2022 to 2023. And to top that all off, in 2023, the blended rate was two points lower than in 2020. So you can see that New Zealand's productivity hasn't really increased since before the pandemic. These are troubling statistics that show New Zealand's economy has flatlined and will need stimulus later in this year to spark some life back into it. ANZ has some great research to support the point of a weakening economy. Their monthly truckometer study acts as a proxy for economic activity by measuring the movement of trucks. As much of New Zealand's freight is uniquely moved by road over rail, it's a great proxy for companies that are moving inventory or they have manufactured or sold some goods. ANZ state that the heavy traffic index aligns closely with GDP while the light index has a six-month lead. For the past two months, both indexes have seen heavy declines. In May and June of this year, the light index fell 0.4 and 2.2% respectively, while the heavy index dropped 2.3 and 5.5%. This is not a good sign and is a heavy drop, particularly for the heavy index. These charts make for grim reading, particularly when we compare it on a per capita basis. They've also released their card spending data. As New Zealand's largest bank, they have a good reading on this. On a monthly basis, the data too shows that we had a particularly terrible June with spending in nearly all categories falling for the month. Across all industries, spending was down 1.3% on average, which is huge. Just three sectors were up for the year, services, goods, and utilities. In the services sector, if we account for spending volumes, it was the necessities that caused the increase, such as insurance, medical, and transport costs. So a large part of this increase in the services sector was out of people's control, as they were necessities. If we look at good spending, much of this increase was due to spending at supermarkets and fuel stations. And utilities, well, it's necessary spending on electricity, gas, and water and the price is forced up every single year. So people are spending less, causing lower demand for goods and services, causing lower corporate profits, causing unemployment, causing spare capacity in the economy, and given the pace we are seeing, that's clearly going to be a concern for the Reserve Bank if they hold rates into 2025. New Zealand's swap rates can also be a great predictor of what's to come for interest rates. They are used by banks and financial institutions to hedge their interest rate risk. So these values, in real time, reveal the true sentiment of bankers with billions of dollars of interest rate exposure. Interest.co.nz gets their data from an anonymous New Zealand bank on a daily basis. After the July 10th OCR announcement, the one and two year short term rates dropped to levels not seen since late 2022. This is significant as the activity on these shorter term rates indicate where large financial institutions expect rates to go. Another large market is the foreign exchange market. The New Zealand dollar is one of the most traded currencies around the world. The July 10th OCR announcement sent the New Zealand dollar down 1% versus the greenback. This frenzied trading activity indicates that currency traders expect rates in New Zealand to drop sooner than originally expected. Currency is often parked in high interest rate markets, such as New Zealand, for a better return. If there are concerns that interest rates may drop, 
investors quickly sell their New Zealand dollars to find a more dependable market for yield. So the billions running through the banking sector and the billions running through the foreign exchange markets have all voted on July 10th to expect sooner than expected rate drops. To top all of that off, the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research performs a quarterly survey of businesses. On the 2nd of July, they released their latest survey findings. A net 28% of firms reported a decline in trading activity over the past three months, and 35% expected this to worsen. Also, a net 25% of firms reduced their headcount during the past three months, the highest rate in the survey since the GFC in 2008. The head of research at ASB said the survey showed inflation had been beaten and screamed for the OCR to be reduced sooner rather than later. It also encouraged ASB to be the first bank to bring forward their interest rate cut prediction from February next year to November this year. The Reserve Bank is sticking to their expectations for August 2025, while ANZ says the risks are tilted towards a cut in November. So what do I think we'll see over the next few months. I think we'll see more negative news coming out in the papers. Stagnated growth, firm layoffs, net migration losses, poor business sentiment, and that kind of thing. I also think as swap rates continue to slide, banks may start to slightly decrease their interest rates, particularly on the shorter 6, 12, and even 24-month terms. The CPI announcement coming up on the 17th of July will be perhaps the most significant signal so far. Currently, we have an annualized inflation rate of 4%. The Reserve Bank expects the announcement will come in at 3.6%, while ANZ is more pessimistic, down at 3.3%. On a quarterly basis, ANZ is expecting an inflation of just 0.4%. Over a year, that represents just 1.6%, which is at the bottom range of the Reserve Bank's inflation target of 1-3%. to So if ANZ's expectation is correct, Technically, we may already be primed for a rate cut shortly. We've already seen Westpac cut their shorter-term mortgage rates this week, but I think many banks will be sitting on their hands waiting for next week's CPI announcement. So the inflation news next week is perhaps one of the most anticipated of the year for anyone with a mortgage. I hope you enjoyed this video. A whopping 90% of you don't currently subscribe to my channel. Subscribing helps me make more content just like this and shares my videos with a wider audience. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you have any thoughts on this topic, please drop a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.